we can hear the Woggle sample noise source by connecting the Woggle sample input directly to the space out signal input. This is the wave that's normally used by the Woggle module to set pseudo random values by freezing this wave at a particular time and then using that value as a new pseudo random value. But we can use this as an additional noise source with other sounds. So try patching it to other audio inputs and mixing it up with other sounds. Noisy reverb. This is a patch which shows how you really can patch anything anywhere. The Woggle sample input has been designed as an input, but it can be used as an output. Also, when the Woggle sample input is used as an output and connected to the LPG1 signal input, in theory, this should override the default carrier signal that is sent to the LPG1 signal input. But when this signal is enhanced with the fold knob, the carrier signal is strong enough to also pass through LPG1. The result is a sound which is created by the combination of the woggle pink noise from the woggle sample input and the carrier wave. This is then given a long reverb fade using the function one inverted output which sends a rising signal to the space out amount input as the release phase of function one causes the volume of the source sounds to fade away. Video game jump. This patch applies the function one inverted output to the source pitch input so that when a note fades out, the pitch rises. But in this example, the function one signal goes via the woggle module which creates a stepped pitch change rather than a smooth pitch slide. Before it reaches the woggle, the function one inverted output is sent to the utility module where its range is limited with the C knob. The woggle module will only generate a new value when it's triggered, so a fast continuous stream of signals has been created using function two. The sharp peak in the function two shape here can emulate a trigger signal. This is connected to the woggle trigger input. So a new woggle value based on the function one inverted output value is triggered each time the function two wave starts a new cycle. As the function one signal falls during the release phase, a rising signal is sent to the woggle sample input. Turn the function one release knob to change the height of your video game character's jump. Simple fourth note trigger. This sound uses the sequences gate out section to set a new random 
woggle value every fourth step. This value is sent to the fold input. So for every fourth note we get a new random fold amount. We can use this as the basis of a much more complex patch or we could just tweak it as it is or we can use this as an additional effect to add some movement to an existing patch. Random release. This sets a new release time for each note using the Woggle Steps output, which is automatically triggered every time a note is played. Space B. In this patch, the wobble smooth output is used to vary the pitch of the carrier wave. The range of the pitch variation increases during the release phase of function 1 as a note is released to give the impression of an alien bee flying away into space. The woggle module is triggered rapidly and constantly by the function 2 wave which is set up to loop. The function 2 positive output is connected to the woggle trigger input to trigger a series of new woggle values which will be used to change the pitch of the carrier wave. The Woggle smooth output is connected to the signal input B, which allows us to use the release phase of the notes to increase the range of the pitch variation when the note is released. This is because the function one inverted output increases the level of C, which increases the level of B, which is sent to the source pitch input. The C knob is at the 50% position here at the start, but we've also played around with it and increased it. So you can, you can tweak that to get the kind of sound that you want. The final connection is from the utility A plus B times C output to the source pitch input. 